The first step of any miniature should be a coat of primer. This can be brushed, airbrushed or done with a spray can. The purpose is to give an even colour to build up from and to help paint stick to the model better, preventing chipping or rubbing as you handle it. Here we're using Velo's Black Surface Primer. Black is good for inexperienced painters as any areas missed will be black and not stand out as much as they would with a white or grey primer. After two slightly thin coats of primer, we want to add some depth to the area. Even the inner area is black without shading will leave them flat compared to the rest of the model. The easiest way to solve this is to dry brush with a lighter colour. In this case we're using dark stone, an off black colour shaded in brown, which will give us a good colour balance between the purple and the tan for the rest of the model. Dry brushing is done by dipping your brush into your paint and then rubbing it against some kitchen roll until the brush is almost paint free. This allows you to quickly stretch the brush across the detail, where the small amount left on will hit only the sharpest areas. The more pronounced the detail, the more paint it will collect, giving it a very rough blend that works great on a surface like the Imp's abdomen, or first style detail on other miniatures. A stiff brush works best for dry brushing, and many companies now produce flat edge brushes for this very reason. But you can also use old brushes to do the job. Just remember to never use a good brush, because dry brushing will render a brush completely useless for any other job once it's been used this way. This step can be done in two ways. You can repeat the dry brush in from the last step with Grimoire Purple, or you can apply it as a normal base there instead. This layer will work as the foundation for the purple to tan blend, we will need to cover almost the entire model except the groin and the abdomen. One of the most important things to note here is paint thickness. You're looking for something that has consistency of milk. Since we're covering a primarily black base, we need to apply a couple of coats here, but it's better to paint several thin coats and needs to lose detail on the model. A medium sized brush is best for this kind of work. Sometimes known as a regiment brush or a size 1, this is your standard workhorse brush. It will do the majority of your paintwork, and as long as it still holds a point, it should always be at hand. When possible, trying to paint more with the side of the brush than the tip. You have more control with the larger surface area, and it also preserves the brush's life.
From here on out, we're painting smaller and smaller areas. While the Grimoire Purple needed to cover almost the entire model, the Alien Purple should cover a smaller area, so the model has some shade to it. As a painter, it's your job to paint in the extra shadow and highlight to give it a more realistic look on a model catching less light than a full-size object would. In this case, we leave the deepest areas their original colour, and start to define areas like the hands and the toes to add extra depth to the sculpt. The imp's colour scheme is a light purple that blends into a tan colour as it moves up the arms and past the knees. The area that needs the most coverage of this purple are the hands, the feet and the shoulder blades. These are the main areas that will remain purple and receive further highlights. On the back, you'll also need to paint the lower back purple, carrying the colour from the shoulders all the way to the waist. The inner back plate blends into the tan about halfway up, and this means you need a strong purple base, while the area around it will still become tan. Mixing in some Warlock Purple to the Alien Purple, we're going to start highlighting. We start with 3 parts Alien Purple to 1 part Warlock Purple, putting 2 drops of paint onto the pad and then mixing them together until we're happy with the colour. Paint brands with dropper bottles makes this especially easy and are one of the reasons we're using army paint to paint. This layer should be applied to anywhere the light would catch, such as the shoulder blades, the fingers and the ankles. You should be aiming to paint the edges of the armour plates as well, just to the top side of the hands and leg areas. It may take a couple of layers to build the colour up, but this can give you a nice smooth blend, rather than a stark transition, and will enhance the model greatly. One of the advantages to controlling the lighting, is that you can bring out detail that would otherwise be hidden. Highlighting the edge or connecting parts give a rich contrast between the different arm plates, and help bring out the sculpt's detail even more. With a mix of 50-50 Warlock and Alien Purple, we're doing the most extreme highlights. We focus on just the highest points of the model, such as the knuckles, the toes and the shoulder blades, using just the tip of the brush so you're trying to catch the edges and make those details pop. You should be using almost no paint and just a single drop will collect on the part you're painting. When painting the shoulder blade, we should focus on the upper curve rather than the edge. While the rest of the imp is armor painted, this area is smooth and more organic, and the highlight should focus on the curve instead. It's best to try and do this as more of a blend and it will work as good practice for the next step. Keep your paint thin and carefully draw your brush across the area you want to highlight. Wait for it to dry and repeat the step on a smaller area. The next step is the hardest part of painting the imp, because we need to transition from purple to tan on the armour plate. But if you're struggling you can just paint on the armour plates a single tan colour, and ignore the blending altogether. Leather brown works as a good base to blend up to lighter tan, so that's what we're using here. 
Like painting the shoulder blade highlight, you want to thin your paint so it takes two or three coats to cover the purple. Then start about a third the way up and paint towards the top of the plate. You will slowly build up the colour towards the top until you have a smooth transition. Remember that where you end your stroke will also have the largest concentration of paint, giving it the deepest colour and always end with a brush stroke going up or to the side to collect paint in these areas. The back needs special attention since the spinal column changes colour midway down and becomes a purple triangle at the waist. It's a strange transition but can easily be managed if you're careful. Now we apply a highlight of monster brown to the raised plate areas, exactly as we did with the purple. The large plates and muscles mean we're looking to add definition to the shape of the arm, not just where the light catches it. Try to paint a thin highlight where the muscle sticks out, along the edges of plates and you're good to go. Bring the monster brown right down to the purple as you want a smooth transition, not a darkening and a lightening. The purple and tan need to appear to filter into each other in an organic fashion. Like with the fingers, we now need to add the extra highlights using desert yellow. Pay special attention to raise the areas in the centre of the fire plate. As a final step, we need to pick up the details on the face and the shoulder spikes. Using dark stone as a base, we clean up the inner face, being careful to avoid getting down on the lower jaw or the eyebrows. Using just the tip of your brush, pick out the teeth using desert yellow. Try not to thin the paint down too much to avoid risking it overflowing. Fill in the eye sockets with desert yellow while you're doing the teeth, being careful to keep within the recessed areas and not giving your rim crazy eyes before finishing the teeth with a highlight of skeleton brown. Repeat the same process on the shoulder spikes and you're done painting the imp. All that's left is to paint the base, necromancer cloak and the project is finished. Thanks for watching and please come back for more painting video games. If you found this video helpful and would like to see more, please consider supporting us through our sponsors below.